Danger Dolan. From alien theories to the rights of Egyptian women, we count 15 of the surprising and myth-breaking facts about ancient Egypt only discovered these last few decades. Number 15. A lot of the pharaohs were, in fact, quite rotund. Art and statues of the ancient pharaohs we find today depict them as thin, fit, and well-built. In reality though, most were unhealthy, overweight, some even with diabetes. This mostly comes from their luxurious lifestyle, their diet of bread, beer, and wine. Queen Hatshepsut was even morbidly obese and balding, whereas her sarcophagus tried to suggest she was thin and fit. Number 14. Egyptians used antibiotics and did not even know about it. This one is pure blind luck born from patent recognition over the ages. The Egyptians found that moldy bread or soil, when placed over wounds, it actually made them heal faster. Whereas today, we know that antibiotics born from this mold is what can cure you of this potentially fatal illnesses, and they come now in convenient little pills. Number 13. Brains were scooped out with a tiny hook. The mummification process has changed over the centuries, but back in the glory days of Egypt, it was a battle against decaying internal body parts. Their solution was to cut out the lungs, the stomach, the liver, and intestines. But instead of making an incision to remove the brain, they used a wire hook to scoop it out piece by piece. This didn't always happen though. There have been plenty of examples where Egyptians instead elected to keep their brain intact, though inevitably it just turned to mush. They believed that the heart was the source of your supposed soul, whereas today we know the truth about the brain. Number 12. The Egyptians were never in contact with aliens. It's a common myth that due to how much the ancient Egyptians accomplished, the pyramids, the architecture, and their unwavering faith in a complex afterlife, that they must have been in contact with advanced life forms, as shown in some hieroglyphs. Some people even use said stone engravings as proof they must have. But all signs point to logical scientific explanations. The pyramids, for instance, it wasn't beyond the realm of possibility that scholars and architects could have built them at the time. It just would have taken a while. Number 11. And speaking of pyramids, the pyramids were not in fact built by slaves. Most media depict Egyptians toiling tons of rocks at the whip of their pharaoh masters. But evidence disproves this in a number of ways. For instance, villages were set up for the workers and their families. They were provided good pay and their corpse chambers left untouched for thousands of years revealed they were quite well off with luxurious perfumes, golden rewards from the pharaohs and all manner of food. The slave rumor was started around 400 BC, but the reality is, like the Death Star, contractors were hired to do the job despite the risks involved. The difference being, Luke Skywalker did not blow up the pyramids. Number 10. Who cracked off the Sphinx's nose? You would think it might have been during a world war or when Napoleon reached Egypt, but all of these events took place 60 years after the first known drawings of the Sphinx without a nose in the 1730s. At this point, there are no documented leads Although an Islamic cleric, Sa'im al-Dar, did vandalize the Sphinx in the 1370s, but he was punished for it. The nose thief remains anonymous to this day. Number 9. All of ancient Egypt has not yet been discovered. Most would believe that Egyptology was dead. How could we be in 2014 and still making new discoveries? Easy. Everything's buried under hundreds of miles of sand. The Egyptians ruled for thousands of years, so naturally, there'd still be quite a bit of it. In fact, as recently as the start of this year, we discovered a new pharaoh was a Rebre Senebke from 3,600 years ago. It was buried near the tomb of King Sobekhotep from the 13th dynasty, and it came with a whole slew of colored illustrations from the era. Number 8. Egyptian women were equal to men, and in every way this was true. Unlike in Greece, where women were basically owned by their husbands, Egyptian women were legally and financially independent. They had the right to divorce and remarry and negotiate ancient prenuptial agreements. While women were typically assigned to home duties, they still received the same payments as men and were entitled to compensation in the event of divorce. It was a society of tolerance, respect, and equal rights without question. Number 7. Their fashion actually prevented against head lice for the more well-off Egyptians. They wore full wigs. The middle or lower class would wear long hair, often in pigtails. But for children aged 12 and under, their heads were shaved except for one plated lock. 
Not only was this a sort of coming of age fashion statement, but it was to prevent fleas and lice attacking children's heads. And like the antibiotic bread, it worked quite well. Number six. Were Egyptians obsessed with death? The firm answer is not really. However, it's easy to jump to the conclusion they were due to building pyramid tombs, mummifying bodies and preserving them. In reality though, they saw death as simply another chapter in life, where they would continue working for their pharaoh without being held back by their biological forms. We've seen old pottery from their families of the deceased, demanding they get back to work as if they hadn't died at all, they were just being lazy in the afterlife, and they built the pyramids to allow their beloved pharaohs and by proxy the Egyptian people to live on in the glorious afterlife. They didn't see death as you and I see death. Number five. Pepi II and his honey fly trick. During the sixth dynasty of Egypt's old kingdom, we find a six-year-old pharaoh named Pepi II who managed to live for at least 60 years. Allegedly, he hated flies constantly buzzing around him. So he ordered two naked slaves to smear themselves in honey and stand next to him at all times, a way to keep the flies interested in them and off him. Suffice to say, he became known to some as the Fly King. Number four. Ancient Egyptians loved their board games. They had a bunch back in the day. Who can forget such classics as Meehan and Dogs and Jackals? But it was the game of Senate workers and pharaohs alike loved. Rules are still debated among historians, but the gist is you had a set of pieces along a board of 30 painted squares. Each player had a set of pieces moved along based on dice rolls or throwing sticks. Heaps of paintings depict famous pharaohs playing this game and Tutankhamun was even buried with a game of Senate. Number three. Was King Tut killed by a hippopotamus? All signs point to Tutankhamun dying young and instantly around 19 years of age. The scans reveal he'd been embalmed without his heart or chest wall. And Egyptologists agree there's a high chance it might have been because of a hippopotamus since they hunted the beast for sports as shown on statues inside his tomb. As ridiculous as it sounds today, it very well might have been the sharp blow that put this pharaoh out of commission. Number two. The curse of the pharaohs, created purely from media hype and our own faulted ability to recognize patterns. When eight of the 58 people died following the excavation of Tutankhamun's tomb, it was believed dangerous fungi and gases built up over the centuries might have been responsible for the curse. In reality though, it was a string of coincidences, and the man responsible for uncovering the tomb went on to live a happy and healthy life. Number one. Was Cleopatra truly beautiful? All media depicts her as a breathtaking display of beauty, just as she would want to be remembered. But Roman coins from the era reveal masculine features like a big nose, chin, and snarling lips. Was this the true depiction of Cleopatra, or propaganda attempting to soil her image? There's no way to find out for sure. That is it for this countdown. Have a good one.